Welcome to Smart About for February 2021 and we're going back to 2019 for the videos you're going to see this time with the exception of Australia because they're not locked down. Uh, they're sending us back some great pictures of what's happening down under so there'll be some of that too in this month's program. I've driven 70 miles down the A55 from Chester to Holyhead and this is the gateway to Ireland. And there's been a lot of fuss about the Irish border between North and South and there's been a lot of fuss about the traffic down at Dover crossing to Europe. But uh, to point out this is the second busiest port in the UK and it also is a gateway to Europe because as soon as you leave here you're in Europe and you're heading for Dublin where they use Euros as currency and they're staying in Europe. There can be four hours between ferries and then two more or less come at once, one Stena Line and one Irish Ferries. Between them they can hold about 400 trucks, uh, which is equivalent to a tailback along the A55 of about three miles. If you're a foot passenger, you can enter from the town centre from the high street or across a bridge into the terminal. And if you come by train, the train will deliver you straight into the terminal where you just walk across the way and start queuing for your ferry. After you've bought the tickets, of course. Trains run from here into Chester and then off to Manchester, down to the Midlands and to London and South Wales. In January and February the place is very quiet, so a good time to film, the cafe is empty and there's plenty of seats. In 2019, which is the subject of this programme, uh, we said goodbye to them in something like the May of that year and there was a little farewell party held in a village in Cheshire near Whitchurch and we just sort of said goodbye to the three of them. There's Jess, who's the oldest, then there's Abby in the middle, and the youngest is Becky. Now Becky has just had a birthday and we've been communicating via WhatsApp and things like that. And so I know that she's missing doing the videos with me. So here she is to introduce something that's going on down there in Australia. Since the 
beginning of time. It brings us together. And tears us apart. We all have our views. So where do we start? By listening to each other. By sharing our hearts. We're all part of the story. Australia Day. Now I told you last month that I made all the titles for the Maythorn Monthly in 2018 from the Hawthorn Tree video. Uh, I got quite tired of that and I actually commented on this in 2019 during the programme. All I had to do was to use various parts of this video in the background and put various titles up front to announce the various features in the Maythorn Monthly. I got my ideas for titles from watching various other programs. I've been watching Homes Under the Hammer as a property investor and also Click as a bit of a technology geek. Is that the right word? Um, so I watched those two programs, have done for years, and the titles that open those programs are very intricate and as a result uh, they've stood the test of time. Uh, so I studied them quite closely. Uh, Homes Under the Hammer, for instance, when you look at the graphics uh, you never get tired of it, you're always seeing something new. If I slow down the bird, for instance, you can see the motion that uh, generates that. Uh, it took, must have taken some time, uh, there's a lot of work in it. I'm not capable of doing anything like that, so I had to use the simple tools I have at my disposal and the fact that I'm not an animator, cartoonist or even any kind of artist. Uh, the Click uh, titles, the BBC's technology programme, uh, they're possibly a little more within my control because they're all done uh, in the computer with, by mixing different images together. I can do that sort of thing, but again, it's very time consuming and they've obviously got a lot of top professionals working on it. But I was always impressed with these titles, so when I came to do my own, I obviously tried to copy them just a little bit. While Spain is sunny pretty much all through the winter, Bulgaria gets a lot of snow. In fact, parts of the country are known for skiing. This is the view from Colin's house last week when the snow was mostly cleared. And you can see that uh, he has a couple of acres of land which uh, he still has to do something with but has now created a proper path down to the gateway so you don't have to climb over all sorts of rubble to get up to the house. You've seen the house before, it hasn't changed much, but then it was structurally sound and didn't need a lot doing to it. So let's take a look inside, and then through the double doors at the front there, uh, you went straight into a rather dark and dingy hall area. That's now become the kitchen, when we showed you some progress with this, and it has a dining table as well. 
Uh, the kitchen is fully fitted, has plenty of storage, and uh, also, of course, has that wonderful staircase, which I think you said was more like a ladder going up to the bedrooms. As in most European countries, the bathroom houses the washing machine. The laundry is generally done in the bathroom, but it's a big bathroom. It houses the hot water cylinder and all the usual things that we'd expect to have, uh, the shower cubicle, uh, and then of course a sink and toilet and bath. The single bed has been removed from the living room and sent upstairs. That doesn't mean you can't sleep in here though, as there's a big L-shaped couch and it looks very comfortable to me. And so to the bedrooms. Two bedrooms, um, one either side of a very large landing. Uh, this bedroom is a double. The landing has a lot of potential as well, and you can see where the ladder staircase comes up. Uh, there's also an external door, so you can come here via the external staircase and bypass the bottom of the house altogether. The other bedroom has two single beds in it, and as you can see there's plenty of space. The floors are all down, and it's all looking rather grand. And welcome to the Maythorn Monthly for March from Spain. I'm just on the rocks by the sea um, near the lighthouse and the Torre del Rey. And I've seen where the cats have been going. The Torre del Rey site has all been cleared, looks very smart. And I just spied some cats across the road from there, hiding in the bushes and on the sort of cliff edge going down to the sea. So there's still some of them left. First thing I'd like to tell you about is the internet because last time I covered the digging up of the pavements, the dropping down of some hoses that will take the fibre optic and I said I'd come back to Spain and find out how fast my broadband was. So here's the speed test app on my computer uh, showing us that we now have 40 megabits down download speed and about 10 megabits per second going up which is 10 times as much as I used to have and is giving me great potential for sending my videos up to YouTube. This has always been one of our favourite spots uh, as a, there's a walk that comes from along Mori de Goss around this piece of headland up past the lighthouse and down into Playa La Concha past the Torre del Rey. Nothing much has changed at Playa La Concha, so I'm going to concentrate on the main part of the resort. And in the main grassed area at uh, Playa Las Emplarias, um, last year I caught them putting up some kind of structure which I wasn't sure what it was. This year I've caught them, got, got a bit further with it, but still I can't stay long enough to see what the event is that they're going to stage. Maybe next year. Back to Bulgaria now and footage that Colin brought us from his visit last week and we're going to go down to the docks area where you get the ferry across to Romania across the river Danube. Uh, this bridge was of some interest. Colin went with another photographer so um, she was busy taking photos of the bridge which is a footbridge coming across from the town uh, down onto the dock front and onto the area where you catch the ferry across to Romania. So that's the view of the river Danube. And we've parked our car in the multi-storey and we've uh, gone up and looking at a real nice blue sky and the blue sky also has a lot of birds and padlocks oh yes that's happening in a lot of places these days yes yeah, so here's the bridge here's that flickering there's all the uh, birds flying over the top so let's hang the camera out and have a closer look at all those birds flocking along the riverfront and there they are
on some future visit we'll have to try and get across to Romania on the ferry and uh, show you that trip because that could be interesting. Now here's a view um, taken high up uh, above Svishtov town and you may not recognize where we are at this point because you haven't seen this particular view but I don't know if you remember the human sundial that I was testing out well it's just down there below us um, looking the other way uh, you can see that um, where we took our video from is a kind of amphitheater area cut into the hillside and when two photographers go up onto this hill they're not as much interested in the sundial as some of the old ruined buildings if we just race up the steps here we can see uh, the, the start of those uh, at the top of the hill there's lots more buildings here and we'll show you those another time every few seconds it happens two people living different lives discover they're looking for the same thing each other now you can spend a lot more than a fiver on this site, but I spent a fiver on a theme tune for the Maythorn Monthly, that's what you're hearing in the background, and I decided to spend another fiver this month on getting a much slower version of the same thing. I don't know if you can still recognize it, but I'm going to play out with the slow version of the Maythorn Monthly theme and another fiver well spent. Well, I don't know about you, but I don't think that sounded anything like the original theme, but for a fiver it was a piece of music I could use, and nobody could make a copyright claim on me, which is something these days. So, other things I like to do with video, I like to have a split personality. I can be two people at once, I'm a one-man band, so there are limitations to what I can do, but sometimes I find a few tricks to make it more interesting. So I'm in my makeshift office at home in the kitchen uh, at our home at Higher Kinners and Flintshire, and Colin is currently in Bulgaria and the other me is currently in Spain. That's the trickery of video. So right now I'm going to hand over to uh, the other Brian who's got his Spanish hat on and is on the beach in Spain. I wish I was there with him. Yes, well, thank you, Brian. Um, I must say I'm not one for wearing a hat at all, not since my school cap. Makes your head too itchy. Anyway, I've been having a wander around Oropesa, not just Marina Door, and I've seen tarmacking wagons just turn up and dump a load of tarmac. Doesn't seem to be a system or a plan, they just do bits and go away again. Uh, later, later on somebody comes along and uh, puts some white lines down, or in the case of just by where I live, they uh, had to redo the black and whites for the zebra crossing on the half of the road that they'd done. When the other half will get done, it's a dual carriageway, who knows? Welcome to the Maythorn Monthly for April. I was just wondering whether to try some of this gym equipment, but I haven't got a clue how to use it. So, uh, no, probably best not to just get on. This one looks quite simple. I wonder if I can get on this. Hang on a minute. Ah. Right. So here we are in Higher Kinnison, uh, in Flintshire, the village where I'm currently living. And just across the main road from here is one of our local pubs, and we have two. Uh, called the Royal Oak, which has recently reopened, and today we've just had our lunch there, been trying it out. So uh, we're going to send the drone across the road so you can see what the pub looks like from the air. So uh, I'll catch up with you later on. Bye. This is Stacy, who went to Bulgaria with Colin a few months ago and did some of these pictures outside my tumble-down house in the village of Oresh. Uh, well, I recently met her when we all went on a day out to Delamere Forest. The idea of the day was to set up some video shots of Stacy taken from the drone. So 
you can't fly a drone amongst uh, a load of trees because you need to be able to see where it is. So we found a clearing in Delamere Forest, which nobody really goes to, so it's fairly desolate looking, but that looks great on photographs. And we wanted a place where Stacy could walk as though it was a catwalk, so we found the path. I'm not going to show you Colin's shoot because that's between him and his model, but uh, I'd like to show you a couple of things during the preparation of this. Uh, Colin took some video for me for last month's Maythorn Monthly in Bulgaria and he used a little camera on a stick like the one I've got. We've got some shots of the camera as it is on the stick and then he attaches it to the drone and prepares to fly exactly the same camera attached to the underside of the drone. Uh, we also had with us that day um, a media student who is doing photography at A level and Charlotte, um, this is Charlotte, um, decided uh, that she would take some photographs so she brought her camera as well, not, not just still photographs, not video. So all in all, uh, a nice Sunday out that turned out to be last week and we're looking forward to doing some more drone filming real soon. In the 70s, I bought an old Bedford coach. It had been designed to carry a racing car uh, to the track and accommodate the, the crew in the front part. So it was a part motorhome, part garage for the sports car. It involved a drop-down ramp at the back of the coach that had been put in by the previous owners. Uh, I didn't particularly want this. I had no plans to put a car in it. So our first thing was to uh, change the layout. On the inside, it looked like this initially and there's a very cramped bunk above the garage area. So we decided to open out the back of the coach and give us a full-sized bedroom and shower. We also later painted the coach in hammerite metallic paint in a blue color. And at that point, we took to the road around the country. How do we stay in contact? Because if you're at home, you've got a, a landline phone. Mobile phones weren't invented in those days, but two-way radio was. Pi Telecommunications were one of the main people making radio sets for vehicles. Even if you never had this yourself, you'd have probably seen it on TV in programs like Z Cars. Z Victor 2, go to um, crossroads of Miller's Quarry Lane, White Farm Road, Blackby. Uh, an explosion has been reported. Uh, Mr. Tom Rushton witnessed the explosion and is waiting for you at the quarry. Investigate and report. Miller's Quarry Lane, White Farm Road, on our way. Although they show a telephone handset there, it was more common to have a little handheld microphone with a press to talk button on it like this one. But then you need someone at the other end, so there are services set up to be your operator. As with Chester Base Radio Contact, this is the control room for that. And you will see a couple of girls who answer the phone and can actually patch through the phone calls to the two-way radios in people's cabs you did have to say over because you couldn't talk and listen at the same time. It was a simplex system and that's where the old over comes from. This is WB6RVR Sacramento. Anybody listening? Over. And after our coach days, then came this. Party in, party, solicitors. If you'd like to be in when you're out, ring Rachel. Of course, we were all asking at the time why would you want to be in when you're out? Because we used to go out to avoid the phone and to get away from it. And somehow Vodafone decided that's not what should happen. So <laughs> they invented the first mobiles, which were huge bricks. They were actually referred to as the brick and very often had a, a shoulder strap with a power pack, some huge batteries on that. Much later on, mobile phones became much smaller and the Nokia 3310 and phones like that were very common at the time and they, with this kind of size, I've got a couple of, these are not Nokias, I, I didn't have a Nokia at the time, um, but these are two phones that I've had in recent years to use in Spain. I just put a Spanish SIM card in them because all I need to do in Spain is make phone calls. So these simple phones by Samsung bought in the UK and Alcatel bought in Castillon de la Plana. Uh, this 
in fact this one, the Alcatel one, has got my Spanish SIM in at the moment. And I've kept a couple of other phones of that size because I rather like the design of them. This one's a little more interesting because it's all silvery. Uh, this was on the 3 network and going back years, the 3 network would let you roam all over the world in dozens of countries at no extra cost. So that was a good network to be on then. This is one Nokia I do have. And I kept this because it's interesting in that its keypad is round. Never seen one like that before or since. But the thing about all these phones, of course, is they just make phone calls. Welcome to Spain. You've just been watching model Misuzu outside Colin's house in Bulgaria. Uh, she's coming to Spain next month with another model, so you'll be seeing that uh, in June. Uh, we've got plenty for you in Spain, and Colin's been in Bulgaria, so we got some of that. And lots more to show you from the UK and elsewhere, so keep watching. So this is Davy's bungalow. Davy's the guy who feeds all the stray cats. He also has a dog called Bonnie, who is like a guard dog for the property. 
Davey's about to start some work on his property and has already put the foundations in place for this. Colin's been over and brought this video footage back, as Colin goes to Bulgaria more than I do, and it shows there are some spare bricks lying around. Not sure what he's going to do with those yet. We'll keep you posted. He's got a concrete mixer, which is always handy, uh, but the work in progress at the moment seems to be on the garden. Uh, David's been posting on Facebook about grass seed. Uh, he's got uh, a driveway going up to the bungalow and he's created a new exit by the look of it uh, going on to uh, a newly flattened piece of land which I think is where he must have put the grass seed because there's a netting over the area uh, presumably designed to keep the birds out. Another interesting thing that happened to Davy in March, uh, if interesting is the right word, is his neighbour's garden where there was uh, a bonfire in play um, went out of control and the whole field behind his house was on fire and because of the way the properties are on a hill there was a danger that the fire would spread onto the back of Davy's roof. Luckily that didn't happen and uh, the property survived to tell the tale. So we'll be back in a couple of months to show you how the new lawn is looking and uh, hopefully some of the grass that was burnt down will also grow back. You know my wife, uh, Ruth, she would like to hide behind me because she hates having her picture taken. But I'm going to talk about her anyway uh, because she's been working at Sally's Secret Garden for how many years now? Seven. Seven years and she's just finished that stint uh, because Sally's selling the shop. So Sally's Secret Garden will still be a secret garden but not with Sally. So there you go, that's the end of an era and we're all very sad. Thank you. <laughs> I think she did that well. So I was sitting in Starbucks in Mould one very rainy day and I looked out the window and I saw this bus. It was pouring with rain and it was a topless bus. I'm sure that's not the right term for it. So I ended up in a conversation with the driver uh, who explained to me how the water drains away from an open top bus. And then he gave me a postcard which is advertising the service he provides with a few of these buses that he has. I lived in London until I was 10, so the Routemaster bus you see there was one of our local bus services. A couple of weeks ago, I was back in London to see the latest type of buses, and here's a couple of them here at Tottenham Court Road. I'd gone to Tottenham Court Road with Peter Chart, one of my fellow owners in this building in Marina Door, um, because we wanted to see if there's any development with Crossrail. Last time I went down to this particular spot, it was all boarded up, but now uh, a lot of the work is finished, not as much as they did like, because you probably know Crossrail is supposed to have been finished last year, but they're still working on it. And they're now saying 2020 and even possibly 2021. So, unfortunately, I didn't get to see the completed Crossrail system, but I did get to see the new Tottenham Court Road front entrance. I did get to see an Elizabeth Line train though, that's uh, Queen Elizabeth's name on the trains that are going to run on this line. Uh, the train I was getting back to Chester passes through that big rail interchange called Crewe and the Elizabeth Line trains are parked up at Crewe uh, in the sidings there 
and I also found on YouTube some video of the Elizabeth Line trains on the move at Crewe Station. Perdido, no hay nada por 
This morning, Misuzu and I have been down on the beach. Uh, she's been doing yoga, I haven't. And we're uh, going to show you a place on the frontline apartments where they, they're going to build a wellness center and a yoga and fitness center, something new. So uh, thanks for coming down this morning okay. at the crack of dawn. Yeah, it was amazing. All right, <laughs> and we're now at uh, Playa La Concha and you haven't been here before. You no, like it? I yeah. love it, it's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's have a look at uh, Miss Susie doing the yoga. So here I am in my home studio that I created 12 months ago when the lockdown began. I've got my video editing kit which I can sit in an easy chair, low level, face the screen and get the best scenario for editing. Uh, I've got other computers here and tape recorders and other things that I need. What I haven't got is the sun. Now if you look at me now, the pale complexion, the bush on my head, and now I'll take you back to those wonderful days in 2019 when I was at the Oropesa del Mar Marina with a suntan and a haircut. Uh, behind me is the marina at Oropesa del Mar, uh, just beyond Playa de la Concha. Um, it's not somewhere where we normally get along to, but today we've come here and had a drink by the waterside and watched boats coming in and out. And this is also a refueling point. And as you can tell, the marina has got uh, a little value in the uh, boats you see behind us. Uh, or should I be calling them yachts? I'm never sure.
Welcome to the Maythorn Monthly for September. I'm at the Clangothlan Steam Railway and we'll be having a look around a number of places in North Wales in this month's video. And now pigeons. It's a strange subject, I know, but in Britain, if you go into a city centre, you'll find that they've done everything they can to keep the pigeons out because of the way they pepper the buildings and the pavements and everything else. Um, old ladies very often feed pigeons and the police go and politely tell them that that's not a good thing to do. In Barcelona, it's a different matter altogether. They seem to love pigeons and they get up close and personal with them in a way that I don't think many of us would even want to do. I know we have pigeon fanciers here, but this is a whole different thing. Have a look at this public square in Barcelona where everybody has a great time getting selfies with the pigeons. Soy un hombre del pueblo, harto de trabajar. Mi vida es el trabajo paloma, pero me pagan mal. Las leyes están hechas a favor del patrón La ley no escucha al pueblo, Paloma, aunque tenga razón Que no, que no, Paloma, no Que así que no trabajo yo Que no, que no, Palomita, que no Que así que no trabajo El deber del trabajo Dicen que tengo yo, de mis deberes hablan paloma, de mis derechos no. Pero nos uniremos contra la explotación, la fuerza de la gente paloma siempre estará en la unión. Que no, que no, paloma no, que así que no trabajo yo, que no, que no, palomita que no. Que así que no trabajo yo. Nos juzgan y condenan en nombre de la paz. Cada vez que pedimos paloma, justicia y libertad Pero la paz tú eres y con ellos no estás Que vuelas con nosotros paloma, paloma de la paz
la paloma y vi que no, que así que no trabajo yo, que no, que no, palomita, que no, que así que no trabajo yo, buena paloma y vi que no, que así que no trabajo yo, que no, que no, palomita, que no, que así que no trabajo yo. I'm on the beach at Marina Door, sitting in one of the chairs given to us by Mike and Jill Dooley. They sold their apartment here a few months ago and there are a few things that they obviously couldn't take back on the plane. This is one of them and we didn't have any beach chairs before so I'm most grateful for that.
Time to say goodbye. Hope you've enjoyed the clips from 2019. Join me again next month when I'll be up to date in 2020 and possibly have some other new stuff as well. Who knows? But I don't think we did much in 2020, so we'll have to do something different. See you next month.